and we're live. Yeah, you never want to go out there on social media and be like, watch the news tomorrow. Shit's going down. Like, like you yes. do that on 4chan, not on Twitter. What was this guy thinking? This is... <laughs> what was this guy thinking? <laughs> like, that's you not know? how you commit a terrorist act. What a yeah. dumbass. Yeah. You, you, didn't see, you didn't see Osama bin Laden on, uh, like, tweeting out, like, it's coming. <laughs> yeah. He checked me once. out in my little cave. <laughs> yeah. To his credit, <laughs> Trump doesn't do that. Remember Trump makes, like, one of his campaign talking points? Like, yeah. I'm not going to tell you, like, the time and date that we're going to go take the oil. You know, that just yeah. helps the people who want to keep it. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like that. And that does make sense to me. That, that like, and, and he has some point where he talks about, it's happened a lot of times, whether it's a news media. I think Geraldo got in trouble for this, right? Maybe back in Iraq. He was like, and mm -hmm. the 3rd Battalion here in Baghdad is about to storm in and take all those Dirty bastards right. out. And, it's and live. while they're all watching TV, like, oh shit, they're coming. Everybody get ready. <laughs> Geraldo says the bad guys are on the and they're like putting mines down and stuff. Like Geraldo got in trouble for that. And, and, and the so. news media you should the get news, in trouble. Yeah, for rightfully that. so. Yeah. Fucking Geraldo. That was very uh, irresponsible. I, I'm sure he apologized, and I doubt he knew he really fully understood what he was doing when he did it. I'd I, like to give him the benefit yeah, of the doubt. I want to think he didn't know the ramifications, but you have to be pretty dumb not to think it through. You, you really do have to be totally stupid to not get it. Like if I had in my information, like just some, like if I got a random text from Donald Trump and it was like, oh, you getting ready for the invasion on next Thursday or whatever, I wouldn't be like screen capping and tweeting it and being like, like, no one would do that. Like, and so it's not even a journalism thing. It's in him, him being a total idiot thing. Because even if he was sitting at home and he got that information, he should have known like, Oof, well, this one's just for me. Not going to yeah, yeah. read this on the And it opens you up to there. some criticism, thing, too, because like, they'll be there. like, you know, hey, Trump, can you rule out nuking Australia? Oh, right. Obviously, we're not nuking Australia. They're allies. But he'll be like, nothing's off the table. I don't no. rule things out in the press because that's, you know, that just the real my question options. is, why bother doing that? Like, why? I can't imagine something happening where anyone needed to bomb Australia. Well, that's right. just hyperbole, but but what right. he's getting at oh, is, like, is like on any serious substantial issue, on. they're like they're like, look, you've said in the past that you might go back into Iraq and take the oil again. Now, is that something we should be worried? Hey, nothing's off the table. You've set our nuclear weapons off the table in Syria. Hey, nothing's off the table, and it and it really should be like that because you're going to have to go into a meeting with other world leaders or diplomats or whatever and hash out these deals where one side wins a little more than the other. It's a strong negotiating point when the other side's like. He's not even taking nukes off the table. This this is just a golf course we're talking about. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good strong negotiating standpoint. And I, I think when Trump's presidency is over, I hope, I think we all should hope, right? That we, we look back and we go, wow, he he didn't do everything we wanted and he did some crazy shit along the way, but he really did stand by a lot of his more uh talked about positions and he really did, you know fight for the um, what's good for America in the end. I hope that that's what happens at the he end of this. hasn't done too much where I feel like I think the every, most people score has been posted. I, I do think on the environment, I don't know. we're headed in the very wrong direction. Um, yeah. He's yeah, all about the legacy energy policy, you know, the oil and gas and nuke. You know, like if it doesn't fuck up the environment, they don't like it. And, um, and then, of course, the EPA guy. Didn't he just have like 7,000 emails released or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Scott threw it. And All the thing is, is he's actually sued the EPA multiple times and was mid-lawsuit just before he was nominated. Like he was in the process of suing the EPA. Yeah. Um, and I guess within the next week or two, he's going to be getting rid of the, the Clean Water Act um, and the methane restrictions. They're going. Uh, if they don't pass, I think Trump's already said he'll executive order them away. Uh, which is a little concerning because, you know, who needs clean water, the right? The stock market seems excited about it. Who? Uh, the, stock the stock market, market. he said. <laughs> I, I just, I I can't get on board with the dirty air. Yeah, it doesn't seem unfair to, to use the right stock now? market to take credit, though, because, like, that would be, like, there were times when the stock market was doing really good. <laughs> not really, not this good ever, obviously, but it was doing okay under Obama. Best like, it was doing good uh, at some it, points, but it, it's not like, I don't know, it's just, it seems... Because then when, when the stock street. market does go down, if you're going to take credit for it being because of Trump and now, you have to take that loss as well. You know, it just doesn't seem like 
the best. I don't know. Yeah, they said something the other day that the stock market was on a winning streak not seen since the 80s or something like that. I, I think yeah, that some, some small part of it definitely has to be all of Trump's deregulation talk and all of his taxation talk. Like, like he, there's a lot of pro-business stuff in there that if you're a major corporation, you're looking at it and you know, I, I, apparently they're, they're, they think that's a good thing. They're going to make a lot of money in the in the coming Maybe. quarters and years. But I think they're also going to miss out on a lot of money. So uh, Jeff Sessions is uh, about to take back Obama's uh, restrictions on, pri you know, like he was trying to get rid of private prisons because that's a huge issue right now. Uh, and I think Jeff Sessions is getting rid of that. Um, Sean Spicer. Kyle said, I don't want to let that just slide by. Just okay. And look at this uh, Spices. Stock market chart. I gave you the link. Right. This is what the stock market's been doing. And you can see it's on a little run up lately. I don't know exactly when Trump started his term. What was it? It has been on average <clears throat> higher since it's, Trump. I'm not a particular it, Trump so supporter. For people so. watching, Trump took over right around here where my mouse is. I see a trend that looks kind of the same since about 2007. Maybe U.S. stocks on Wednesday were looking at their longest record setting streak in 25 years. The Dow Jones Industrial, S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite all <coughs> climb. If all three indexes close higher on Wednesday, it will mark five consecutive days of all three re setting record highs at the same oh, time. The so longest all... such streak of simultaneous record since a six that's a bullshit streak. session. Yeah, streak. I don't really care how many. Days Is it? In a row. I mean, yeah, that's a total bullshit. Like, but at oh, the end of the, like, they all went the up stock five market... days in a row. That, like, that's not a thing. But uh, I'm looking at the stock market. It, you know, from the long market term watch, here. it's a market watch article. This isn't laying I'm not saying that it's incorrect. I'm saying that it's a bullshit like thing to measure. Like it, if the thing five goes days up, isn't really long yeah, enough. Yeah, five days in a row of in a going month. up, you know, like that, I, I could give a fuck. Um, but I do care about the long term. And if you look at that, this to me looks more or less the pace that's been set through Obama's term, right? Obama took over in 2008. Um, so it actually dropped at first when he joined. He joined right around there. <coughs> and, um, and then went up for the next seven years. So I don't see the Trump stock market doing something that the Obama stock market didn't. Now, if it continues to go up you know, unabated, that's pretty amazing. But it's just a continuation of the existing trend so far. I, I think there's just something too that MarketWatch.com wrote an article about it though. Like 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 I don't know enough about the markets to know if this is a, a thing that matters or not, but they seem to think it was. That's what they do. I mean, it will you, go up you... for a bit with all his deregulation, and he's trying to get companies to manufacture in the U.S. Those things are good for the economy. Um, I not really a fan of Trump, but I don't think we have to worry about the economy. I think we have to worry about everything else while he's president. Um, but I, I do think he's going to be good for the economy because he just you know, he puts companies like, you know, he'll call them out, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, he does. Do I, I don't know. The whole stock market thing, it's like, it just seems like whether or not it's up or down, like it's hard to make that connection with the actual president, you know? Yeah. Like it just doesn't yeah, seem I mean, like it's a good argument in favor or against Obama or Trump because it's like, like they've they've presided well trump hasn't presided over a bad time in the stock market yet but he's, it's so new like you were saying it's such a small sample size it will happen and when that does happen you can't like just immediately like as if you latch onto this argument now then when that day comes you have to be prepared to argue back and say actually it really tanked now because of this other thing and has nothing to do with this guy like i don't it just seems kind of yeah, the, like it's the, easy the to argue on ass. an eight year long bull run and a lot of people are like look what trump did but, oh, yeah. You know, like I've seen that. It's I've like been, you've been in the office, what, two weeks? Yeah, four. <laughs> but it, you know, so it's on an eight year long bull run. I've been watching it for eight years now. And um, mm -hmm. the thing that Kyle mentioned where they went up five days in a row, like all three of them went up five days in a row. It, five days. You know, I, I do, do think it will. It made but... news. I mean, if you Google it, like Kyle, they make news Tom. every day. Which, like, that's not. It's a... all fake news. In fact, <laughs> no, CNN. No. I'm not Very saying the fake. stats wrong. I'm saying it's such an Very insignificant fake. stat. They write about shit every day. Not a little fake. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think it will go up steadily, especially as the deregulations and everything come in uh, that Trump's talking about. Um, I think it would be very, very strange if the stock market didn't start going up when, when those laws passed. And I, I'd want to know why. I think to, uh, to what you were saying, I Kitty, about liking good. how he calls companies out. Like, yeah. I, I like that in a way because the companies know they're no longer untouchable. But I also don't like the shit like everybody was raving about his carrier thing. 
where he saved some jobs in Indiana because that oh, it wasn't like 500 thing. or something. Even it, it, wasn't even, it, it wasn't right? even about the uh, the number of jobs itself. It was like Trump, like we want you'll make business better by making it a business environment for everyone that is beneficial. Remove detrimental regulations that make it difficult to start businesses. And you'll see, you know, a rising tide helps all ships. You know, everyone's going to help. But what he did is go, all right, Carrier, you enormous air conditioning and heating company, I'll give you special little breaks and leeways, and then we can keep some jobs here. And meanwhile, everyone's rah, rah, shish, boom, bah over keeping jobs when really it's like, okay, well, he kind of just said to all the small time and mid-tier <coughs> uh, air conditioning and heating companies with their own employees, ah, I don't really care about you as much. Yeah. I'm going to give them special treatment. I'm going to, so like that, I, I didn't like that Okay, train, at all. you know, Carrier compared to train tier A&E. Like, but well, yep. you're fucked because the government just gave carriers $7 million to lower their cost of operations. And yeah. uh, you're you, not you're making it a any... better, yeah, yeah. it's not a better business oh, yeah. environment. When... Every business can't take it and thrive off of it, you know? When I meant call them out, I meant like, hey, you know, X company, why are you closing down your plant and going elsewhere? Uh, yes. I don't uh, think he should be able to give. Uh, beneficial treatment to one or another. In fact, I get quite frustrated when I see him on Twitter that's like, oh, these guys are great. Go purchase all your shit here or, or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't think that should be around uh, allowed and I, and I don't think he should be publicizing that on Twitter because I think I question his motives at that point. I, I do believe Trump's presidency will be run on, on his ego and his statistics and his uh, ratings. Uh, but, you know, I think to hold a, a company accountable I think that's important. Yeah, yeah there was to a put term, them in the public to, eye is definitely. I used to call them Benedict right. Arnold CEOs when they outsourced jobs, and I loved it. It was so pointed, you know, like yeah, that guy's a Benedict Arnold CEO. He is firing Americans and hiring Indians or whatever, a trader, and uh, it just didn't really catch on. They, they they should be calling out Tim Cook. They should be calling out you know CEOs from all over the place who do. But he's an interesting. Don't you wish Trump speaker. was slick? Don't yeah. you wish he was well, slick? I, and I wish his IQ was over 50. <laughs> I, his IQ was over 50. I wish, though, that he was slick and smooth. And when they asked him a question, he knew the answer. And not only did he know the answer, that he was going to tell you, he was going to give you a paragraph that, that, that at the end of it, you were like, oh, I came in here totally misinformed. I, Donald just set me straight. If you watch him answer the thing questions, is, Ted Cruz is slick and smooth. And Trump, you know, right? Killer kind of works. So, this is like wh the best whatever. debater in the Senate. Yeah. So whatever Trump's buffoonery is, it is a package that sells. For whatever reason, people are buying Trump more than oh, Cruz. Oh, he was the superior candidate by and large. We all know that. That's uh, not oh, true. Oh, Cruz was. Then mean. how did we get to where we are today then, Woody? He has, Clearly His he was. buffoonery beats slick and smooth debating skills, apparently. Well, then, then yeah. maybe I don't more think politicians it would have shift to buffoonery. Had... Like if you were in the UFC and, and all of a sudden there was a guy just knocking everybody the fuck out with like – Heel clicks, like yeah, he just jumps up, clicks his heel to the side. Right. And they don't know what's happening. He Next thing you know, why about a bang? They're out. <laughs> Usually, like all right, if you could snap your fingers and have it be just Cruz in there instead of Trump, would you do that? No, 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 no. I, I want, I like Trump better than Cruz. I Lots of Trump is Cruz I I, is much more conservative in the scary yeah. kind of conservative way that none of us like at all. Mm. He, you know, we talked about earlier how like, oh, it's it's, you're, you're yeah. a pro, you're pro Second Amendment. I probably know how you feel about abortion. Now, right. the three of us, four of us, I would say don't fit into that mold. Mm -hmm. But Ted Cruz does. Ted Cruz does fit in that mold. And while Donald Trump may put a Supreme Court just as he is, that that is, uh, you know, pro life. Um, Ted Cruz is is a whole nother animal of conservatism that that we don't want. The, the conservatives who are in Congress think he's too conservative. He was the outside. If Donald Trump weren't in that race, Ted Cruz would have been the outsider. Yeah, the religious started. shit is definitely his biggest That's drawback. Not why he's the outsider. Because I do like him. Like he's more of a constitutionalist than Donald. He's yeah, more conservative in the good way than Donald too. I think. But, but it's yeah, the Pence religious is shit scary. Is like, having him as a vice, like because I feel that, like Trump's well, got straight. this massive. Yeah, and sorry? Trump. Trump. Tap them till they're straight. <laughs> Trump, he's saying that conversion therapy stuff. Uh, I can't think of another president in my lifetime, maybe Reagan, who was closer to death than Trump. You know, I, I believe that. Yeah, there's been like people. By age, there's well, a, there's by a Twitter. Age, but by age is part of it. The fact is, Trump, I, I saw Trump recently and I thought he's getting kind of a Chris Christie body type. Like he's getting 
big. Yeah. Yeah. And so that heart, and he's tallish too. I think he lies about his height, but he's like six two. And um uh so he's a big man. That heart a large does guy. a lot of work. And you know, even though he's after Obama, I'm sure Obama will live longer. I wouldn't be shocked if Carter outlived Trump. If you told me Trump dies uh, one year into oh. his term, oh, Trump could die tomorrow. Trump is a stroke away. Oh, no, I, no, no. I, I, it could be. I'm just saying with Carter, like <laughs> Carter's definitely going to die before Trump. Like he yeah. looks like he's knocking on death's door. And I HW, mean, he's going to die. <clears throat> Bob Dole, too. W struggling. Yeah. You but, see Bob Dole at the inauguration? He was the one at the top mm. of the stairs in the wheelchair. You I didn't, didn't recognize him. him anymore. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's. Sad. I mean, Trump's diet as well. Like a lot, there's there's actually a Twitter called Rogue White House, and it's supposedly run by a couple of staff members, but we don't really there's know. A couple of them, but, but yeah. yeah, yeah, they talk about his love of junk food and how like we've always got to have fried chicken ready, you know, nice. on the go. But I actually believe it. Like the, I think well, this yeah. Rogue White House Twitter is real because none of it's like really outlandish for Trump, you know. Yeah. I, I, I've seen him eat lots of McDonald's and shit on the on his plane. Um, it's I, I like that. That makes him more human to me. A, a, a mm -hmm. president who eats fucking fast food, like I like that. I, especially a billionaire president who eats fast food, like how relatable. Who of us? Who of us? We can all relate to that. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's an, I like that about him. Like like you hear you hear so much crazy shit about him about him pissing on whores and in, in Obama's bed and like you know raping women and grabbing pussies and and storming into like dressing rooms that. You hear he eats fast food. You're like, oh, OK, well, who I just care. I do, too. The thing about defiling a bed <laughs> that Obama once slept in means so nothing to me. Like, it, it, let's say that one of I my, couldn't care any less. If my enemies <laughs> came out of the woodwork and said, I found out Wood, you know, Woody stayed at a Holiday Inn back in 2012 and we peed on the bed that he slept in. I'd be like, you think you got me? Like, you think it, like, that's a thing that you did to me? Sleep pissing in a bed they need to clean. in a hotel? from years ago like you didn't do shit to it me. sounds to me like let me let me pose this little scenario okay. let's just say that it is true that there was urination um one that shows that donald trump's into that who cares again i think the fact that he was staying in the room that obama stayed in is com completely coincidental too because you would imagine that the president of the united states and a billionaire the likes of donald trump probably get the best fucking room in a hotel when they go there. right Right. So they're, he, they're gonna be in the best. It's like if if Obama and Trump go to the same hotel, period, they're probably going to, you know, at different times, they're probably the going to show sleep. They're in the presidential suite or the penthouse suite or mm -hmm. something like that. Spare no expense. Right. In Obama's case, we're paying for it. And Trump's at least back then he was paying for it, I guess. Or maybe some people he defrauded. Who knows? But in any case, yeah, yeah I just don't care about that. I don't care about that at all. I do like that he eats junk food. That kind of makes him mm -hmm. relatable. Kyle and I hope he oh. doesn't get bad. Oh, he's real. He's gaining weight. Yeah, yeah, he's no. gaining. Yeah, he's already. He's, he's deep in the fat. He's not fat. <coughs> overweight, no, not he's fat. fat. Seventy-year-old man, fat. That's not that bad. Take he's he's look. he's full form stress. I uh, no, it's not a good look. He's got a lot of stressors these days, though, right? You know, he's I'm got. Not that. Saying it's like evil. I'm just saying he's definitely fat. He's getting like he's fat. he's gained. Look at a picture of him from a year and a half ago, and then look at it now. He's he's put on some pounds. Those it, we we didn't see all of the McDonald's and KFC C meals on his plane. Uh -oh. No, there were like, many. You know, you saw, there you were know there's more. more. I feel for the chef at the White House. Yeah, he's coming. President Trump, we have prepared this beautiful duck orange with asparagus. <laughs> Get me a fucking happy meal. <laughs> <laughs> or he's just like uh, here's your salt and pepper shakers and all your soups and everything. Do you have the MSG? I love that. <laughs> smell everything I have is MSG on it. You know, <laughs> on my plate is special. That's a good impression. <laughs> he's, oh, he's I want a ridiculous. big pack. <laughs> oh. I can right, imagine him like trying to like endear himself to his audience with those tweets of fast food. And then mm -hmm. eventually it was becoming like every time he was sitting down for fast food, like a new aide came over to take the picture and tweet it. And eventually, you know, he had to be like, well, the, no reason to let the American people at it twice in one day, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's twice in a day, not the best thing. You know, <laughs> he's, he's gotten too big. Um, yeah, he's, sorry. I, I interrupted one of you and sounded like you had something. Uh, no, I was done. I was laughing at Taylor's oh, uh, impression. 